First Chronicles chapter 7, verses 20 to 24. And I'm just going to recap that for you. It says, The sons of Ephraim, Shataliah and Barad his son, Tahath his son, Eladiah his son, Tahath his son, Zabad his son, Shataliah his son, and Ezer and Eliad, whom the men of Gath were born in the land killed because they came down to raid their livestock. And Ephraim, their father, mourned many days, and his brothers came to comfort him. And Ephraim went into his wife, and she conceived and bore a son. And he called his name Bariah, because disaster had befallen his house. His daughter was Shira, who built both lower and upper Beth Horon, and Azan Shira. What do we know about Shira from these four short verses in the Bible? First of all, we know that Shira has her own story. We're told who her father is, but she's not mentioned as a side note alongside a husband, nor are her children mentioned, but maybe she had them. Maybe she didn't have them, and maybe her plans to have them didn't work out in the way that she had hoped or wanted or prayed desperately for. Or maybe she had a dream right from when she was a little girl that one day Somehow, even though she couldn't quite figure out how it was going to happen, that God had put on her heart, little girl, when you grow up, you are going to build something. When my husband and I first had churches that were separate from one another, he got called in his internship to a district that had three churches and I had another church that was in the neighbouring district about 45 minutes away. So my husband got sent to one particular church out of the three that was very disgruntled that his, hus- that his wife had not come along with him because the previous pastor's wife had been magnificent, bless her. She had done so much for them. She had run all of their children's ministry and fed them beautiful food. And here was I, the woman who did not go to church with her husband and who was pastoring in another church. They even had a business meeting about how they felt ripped off that I was somewhere else. And my husband gently reminded them that had they received a single pastor from the conference, they would not have got a pastor's wife to feed them lunch either. And he reminded them that God had given me a ministry to do in a neighboring district. And that if the church had problems and holes that needed fixing, that it was the church's responsibility to work together to find solutions to those problems. I really am so grateful that my husband did that for me when I wasn't even present at that meeting because my ministry was just as important as his. And my church could have called a business meeting and said, where is your husband and why isn't he cooking us our lunch? But they didn't. You, whoever you are, as a believer in Jesus Christ, as a baptised member of his community, as a person who has been given gifts for the spirit, you are not a side note in somebody else's story. You have your own unique purpose and calling from God over your life that only you can do for him. The second thing that I know about Shira is that she is an heir of God's promise. If you're not familiar with the story, the book of Genesis is about how God made a covenant promise to a man called Abraham. And then God consists of persisted sorry persisted in that promise with that family over time even though that family turned out to be a hot mess at times God kept showing up for the family of Abraham and kept fulfilling his promises to the family of Abraham over and over again I am going to make you a nation I am going to show up I am going to be present in the world and bless the world because of your descendants Shira is part of that family Shira is a daughter of Ephraim. Ephraim is a grandson of Jacob, Jacob who had the 12 sons. And so Shira is part of this promise. When Jacob's 12 sons got rid of one of their brothers, well, 11 sons got rid of one of their brothers, Joseph, and sent him to Egypt, he married an Egyptian woman. And there he had two sons. One of them is Ephraim. Shira is Ephraim's daughter. And she is part of God's promise. The next thing that I know about her is that she is an overcomer. It tells us in these few short verses of a really awful tragedy 
that happened in Shira's family. It tells us that her brothers died. It tells us that the brothers died trying to take some cattle, but that's actually a really soft English way of saying that they tried to take some cattle. What likely happened because of the words in Hebrew there is that those men tried to conquer those people and the way that they are trying to take the cattle is the way that you take the spoilings of the winnings of war. They're going, yes, I'm going to be victorious because God has promised that we are coming into the promised land and we are going to take over and I am a son of promise and I am a son of Ephraim and I am going to take the cattle of Gath. But they were too early for God's promise to enter into the promised land, even though they had heard of the promise of their ancestors that it was going to be for them. And so Ephraim is devastated that he has lost a generation of children, that they have been wiped out from underneath him. But then he has another son and he calls that poor child Mariah because it sounds like sadness because a sad thing has happened in his family. And I'm glad that we don't name our children after if we had a sad thing or a good thing happen in our family <laughs> anymore. But that's what they did in scripture a lot of the time. And then after he had recovered from his sadness, he has a daughter, a daughter who grows up knowing that there are two brothers missing in her family, a daughter who grows up knowing that her father is heartbroken because they didn't receive the promise that they thought that God had for them in the promised land. Maybe this has shaped her story. When the Israelites step into the promised land, in the book of Joshua, after everything that they've been through in the desert, we don't realise that maybe accepting this promise has actually come with a lot of loss of life, with a lot of broken hearts, with a lot of sons and daughters of God hoping that they will be the ones that take hold of that promise, but it's not for them. Taking hold of the promised land didn't come without grief or struggle or pain. And maybe you can relate to a family story that comes out of grief and struggle, loss and pain. The next thing that I know about Shira is that she is a builder. She built not one, not two, but three cities. And I have flowers growing in the guttering at my house. <laughs> Shira is amazing to have built three cities. And I think to myself, what does it take to build a city? I went down the rabbit hole of the internet and I read a whole bunch of articles and academic papers about what it was like to build in the time that she built these cities. It was likely the late Bronze Age or the early Iron Age. They had very primitive tools and everything was done by hand. The saw had been recently invented. The wheel was also invented, but people weren't really convinced yet that it was worth using. Mostly they built things out of stone and large mud bricks that were made by people and baked in the sun. If they needed to move something heavy, they moved it by boat or by sled, on rollers or on the backs of people. So I think about what does it take to build not one, not two, but three cities? Well, first of all, when you're building a city, you have to think about what is the economy in that place? In ancient times, that would have meant what is the industry, usually farming. So you have to think, what is the land like? Can I have sheep, cattle, goats here? Can I grow grapes, wheat, lentils, barley or olives? Then you have to think about what are the resources like? Not only the soil, but is there light? Is there water and food? Is there enough stone for us to build further if we want to expand? Is the climate okay here? Is it safe for us to travel or easy for people to travel too? Travellers were quite dangerous and in danger in that time. So they needed to think about the safety of a city. Would it have walls and would it have gates and where would it be located and could it be easily ambushed? And then more than that, who would be the people that would live there? Who would help to build this city? And when they lived there, who would be the leaders and what would their politics be? and the actual building part, leveling the ground, laying the foundations, moving materials, making materials, 
baking stones in the sun, building walls and protecting from enemies while the walls are being built and the city is still vulnerable. I imagine Shira doing all of these things, rolling up her sleeves with her strong muscles and sweat dripping from her brow. And it is a strange picture of a biblical woman. And yet there she is in First Chronicles chapter 7. <laughs> 